that started in the Strava Czechoslovakia where Lendl stood out as a unique talent winning the boys singles titles at both Wimbledon and the French Open when Czechoslovakia was still together under a communist regime that was the only way to get out uh, and to see the world and so on and uh, a lot of parents were steering their kids towards sports because there was really not much you could do otherwise and uh, if you were good you got a chance to uh, to travel and see the world and uh, the motivation was uh, a big factor as a professional he spent 270 weeks as world number one 94 singles titles and eight grand slams cemented his name alongside the game's greats despite his phenomenal success he remained an enigma a player arguably much misunderstood on court his focus and desire to win saw him become one of the first players to concentrate on fitness and diet to achieve results you could say he ushered in a new kind of professionalism within the men's game well i hate losing so uh, in order to win you have to figure out what you need to do to lose so you can win if you're losing and i think that's how it came around he did a lot for tennis, uh, I think back in um, 84, you know, he was struggling to win slams. He got into really good shape, changed his diet and uh, became very, very successful and was very professional on what, what he did on court. He was two different people. I played him in 82 and 83 and 84 and this is before he went crazy with, with going to the gym and eating healthy and, and he really wasn't the winner in those days. In fact, he only won his first major in 1984, he was 24 years old. So he wasn't born a winner, he actually worked his way into the winner, the winner circle and he became, from being mentally really weak, we all thought he became really strong because he worked so hard off the court and on the court that he finally I think, realized that I deserve to win. Lendl's first Grand Slam win came in Paris in 1984 against John McEnroe, who would be the start of a bitter rivalry. Those are always difficult matches because you know each other's games and there's no surprises. And, uh, and, uh, Mutual respect with guys like myself, Connors, Lendl, Bjorn I, was, I never had a problem with, but uh, those two guys we definitely were fighting it out on and off the court. But, as the years go by, you realize that those are some of the great moments of your life and um, that uh, hopefully we all realize we made each other better players and so that we came out of it better in the long run. So uh, it's easier to when you look back 10, 15 years later, you get out, hit a few, brings back some old times.
He was born in Basel, Switzerland. He started playing tennis at six years old. He could have been a soccer pro, but chose tennis. He once had a temper, but he found his cool and became a champion. His forehand is feared by all. He's the only player to win three majors three times. He's definitely the man to beat. His name is Roger Federer. He's won 10 majors and counting. Roger Federer, I'm from Switzerland, and my favorite shot is my forehand. My first tennis memories must be when I picked up a, a wooden racket first up and, and then watching Becker and Edberg play at Wimbledon um, in the finals. My motivation uh, has come from my idols, my heroes, um, myself living a dream as a kid, wanting to become a great player, um, living that experience of winning on center court at Wimbledon maybe. And then now it's, I think, the fans. Um, I have many people, you know, holding up signs. That's something that really motivates me in a big way. When the pressure's on, you try to be solid but aggressive, so you don't give the control to your opponent. So you try to actually break it down and make it actually rather simple. Well, that's Sí, ha acertado. Es Rafa Nadal con 12 años y se está jugando el campeonato de España infantil. Su rival, José Antonio Sánchez. El mallorquín fue la gran sorpresa y se plantó en la final. Esta vez, aunque cueste creerlo, se tuvo que conformar con ser el segundón. Nadal ya apuntaba maneras. 
Nadie se lo discute a la hora número dos del mundo, pero tampoco puede negar que siempre le ha gustado más darle a la raqueta que hacer entrevistas. Yo creo que él ha jugado bastante mejor que yo. Eh, no he podido hacer nada. Ha jugado también como los otros días, como yo quería jugar, pero da igual. Los lunes han empezado de 9 a 12 de, de cola. Después de las 4 a las 8 juego a tenis. No, yo juego al fútbol, pero el fútbol es más para divertirme. Es... A pesar de su edad y superando su timidez, esta fue la primera entrevista que concedió a Televisión Española. que a mí me gusta más pista cubierta o hierba o esto que jugar en tierra, aunque tierra un poco no, también me gusta. ¿Hay algún jugador en especial al que quieras parecerte o al que hayas tomado como ídolo? Sí, yo creo que Carlos Moya es un gran jugador, me gustaría hacer como él. ¿Y el torneo que preferirías ganar? Wimbledon, pero está muy difícil y hay que trabajar mucho. Hello, I'm Rafael Nadal. I'm from Spain. And you know what? I don't think I have a best shot. Twenty eleven belonged to Serbia's Novak Djokovic. But a new year means a fresh beginning. And former world number one Rafael Nadal has made some changes, which he believes will give him a more powerful game. I changed my racket and playing with a little bit of heavier racket to, to try to try to have a little bit more power on my on my forehand and my serve. But uh, you know, I am losing control on that, so I need time to, to adapt to the new new weight. So anyway, I I'm working hard uh, It's a risk for the beginning of the season. I accept this risk, but hopefully, and we think that can be positive for, for the future. So many factors uh, are inside the victory or, or, or when you lose. No? So, but for sure, you can keep improving yourself and a lot of things, and that's what, what I go every day on court with. I just try my best thinking about point by point and just keep playing. Don't think about the, the victory or winning the trophy, just think about the next point. That's what I, I try always when, when I'm nervous.
Hi, I'm Novak Djokovic from Serbia, and my favorite shot is back and down the line. My motivation is a, is a win, uh, regardless if it's uh, um, on a Grand Slam or any other event. And just uh, the feeling of winning uh, a tennis match is uh, irreplaceable. And uh, an unbelievable year, definitely the, the one that I didn't expect, but uh, it's a result of the really hard work that I put into. There's a lot been made about his change of diet. There's a lot been made about uh, how he's that much fitter. But I think at, at the level these, these guys play the sport, so much of it is, is between the ears. And I just think mentally he is just toughened up out of proportion to the rest of the others. If winning is a state of mind, on court Djokovic prioritized one particular part of his game. He recognized that this is the most important thing in men's tennis right now, serve and maybe first shot and uh, he started working on it. Novak was unstoppable with wins at the Australian Open, Indian Wells, Miami, Belgrade, Madrid and Rome, all before everything peaked at Wimbledon. With a firm grip on the world number one ranking, Novak Djokovic is the current king of the courts, following an explosive rise to the pinnacle of the sport. He's a stranger to some
Please. 